W.G. Hoskins was the first professor of local history at the University of Leicester. Hoskins is best known for his 1955 book, The Making of the English Landscape, but this video is inspired by a short book he wrote in 1948 called Touring Leicestershire, which features eight drives out of Leicester into the county and back again. I'm driving the first tour in this book, which takes us into East Leicestershire. I've come out of Leicester, heading south on the A6 London Road, and then turned onto the A6030 Stoughton Road. I'm heading for the B582 Gartry Road, which lies on the route of a Roman road, the Via Divana. This is one of the most direct drives out of Leicester into the countryside. On the left is Shady Lane, where there is an arboretum that was the site of a prisoner of war camp during the Second World War. Also on the left is a pub that used to be a farm, and directly ahead of us we are heading for the deserted village of Great Stretton. When you reach Great Stretton, you can park by the gate on the right or slightly further ahead on the left, but look out for oncoming traffic. All that remains of the village is the Church of St Giles. To the south, there is a large moated area that consists of an island surrounded by a deep moat, which is now dry. This may have been the site of a medieval house. Leaving the village, continue along the road, over the bridge, and turn left at the next junction. At this point we turn left, but if you carried on, you would be following the route of an old Roman road, which is fine on foot, but would do your car no good at all. Look to the right for a great view of the church at Kings Norton. There are two good views of this church, one from this road and one from the road to the southeast. We have now turned into Kings Norton, where we can see the church of St John the Baptist, which used to have a tall spire until it fell down and crushed the font in 1850. The church was built in the 18th century by John Wing the Younger, and it's built in a Gothic revival style, which is to say that although it was built in the 18th century, it incorporates features typical of the 15th century. If you can figure out how to open the door with the fiddly door handle, the church is usually open to the public, and the interior is plain but elegant. You can get to the next village, Goulby, along the narrow Norton Lane, or you can retrace your steps and turn right along the main road. St Peter's at Goulby was built by John Wing the Elder. The pinnacles on the tower are sometimes said to be like pagodas. Some people think they're ugly, while others quite like them. Hoskins described Goulby as a small village on the summit of the milestone uplands in beautiful, unspoilt country. East Leicestershire, sometimes called High Leicestershire, runs up to and over the milestone escarpment, part of the great stone belt that crosses England from the Dorset coast to the Yorkshire coast. In Leicestershire, the grey limestone that makes up most of this belt has given way to the golden ironstone or milestone, and it is this colour that you see in Bilsden and all points east. As you drive into Bilsden, there is a walk down to a pond on the right where you can see the layout of an old prisoner of war camp. Coming into the village, bear to the left. The old school has a date 1650 on the front, and two famous Georges have been educated at this school. The Quaker, George Fox, and George Villiers, Duke of Buckingham.
As you turn right, you are turning onto the route of the old A47. The villages have all been bypassed now, but until that happened, you had to drive through all of them. Leave Bilsden by turning left and then immediately right onto the A47. The next stop is Skeffington. At Skeffington, turn off the main road, drive into the village and turn right at the small green to go to the church and hall. For a long while, the hall was the home of the Skeffingtons. According to Arthur Mee's book about Leicestershire, the last Skeffington, Sir Lumley, was quite the dandy. He was ridiculed by caricaturists and even had Byron write of his skirtless coats and Thomas More make mention of his pea-green coat and rich rouge pot. Unfortunately, the church of St Thomas a Becket at Skeffington is usually closed, which is typical of most churches in Leicestershire. Sometimes there are directions to a local keyholder and sometimes there aren't. Leave Skeffington the way you came and turn right back onto the A47 where the next stop will be Tugby. Turn right into Tugby where you will find the church, which is also named after St Thomas a Becket, on the right behind the red brick wall. The church is notable for its big tower and there is a set of windows in the memory of Lord Berners who is said to have appeared at a dinner of the Leicestershire Agricultural Society dressed in a coat made of wool which that very morning had been growing on one of his sheep at Keythorpe Hall a mile away. Leave the village the way you came in but cross over the A47 and head north on Wood Lane towards Lawnd. Leicestershire is often thought of as a fairly flat county, but particularly if you're on a bike, you'll realise there are some pretty steep gradients here. Hoskins wrote that we are passing through some of the most delightful scenery in the Midlands. Rolling, wooded hills, remains of an ancient forest and of special interest in places to the botanist. Go over the first crossroads and you come to the Lawned Crossroads. Hoskins said this is a famous meeting place for hunting and we are indeed deep in fox hunting country here. Turn right to get to Lawned Abbey. is a word which means a glade or pasture and it's where our word lawn comes from. This was originally a priory for Augustinian canons and was founded in the 1120s. Lawned Abbey is now a Christian retreat and conference centre. It is open to visitors so you may well be able to find a cup of tea and a slice of cake. Leave Lawned over the cattle grid and continue on the road to Withcote. left when you reach the Oakham Road and head towards Leicester. Watch out for the driveway to Withcote Hall on your left. It comes up quickly and it's easy to miss. The driveway is quite bumpy and you may find the gate at the end is closed. If it's open you can bear to the right and park on the hall's driveway, although this is private property and if possible it is polite to ask. Otherwise, Park the car where you can and the chapel is on the right. The village itself was depopulated in Tudor times for sheep and cattle pastures, mm -hmm. so like many places in Leicestershire, we're left with the hall and the chapel, which is usually open and is currently looked after by the Church's Conservation Trust. The chapel is early 16th century, while the interior was refurbished around 1744 and doesn't feel as if much has changed since then. Leave with coat the way you came, be careful on the driveway, turn left back onto the main road and head towards Tilton on the Hill. At Tilton
Hilton, St Peter's is a fine church with carvings and gargoyles and medieval tombs of the Digby family. The church is on your left as you come into the village. Turn right and go forward and then turn left onto the main road out of Tilton on the B6047. Watch out for the turn into Tilton Lane on the right. This takes you through Bilston Coplow to the A47. Hoskins wrote that Bilston Coplow is a densely wooded hill of curious shape, landmark for 20 miles with fine views on the right towards the Reek Valley and the uplands beyond. This is the view to the left, towards Bilsden. Bilsden Coplow House was once home to Thomas Toomlin, who was reputed to be the cleverest rough rider in the world. At one point it was also home to Charles Bennion, the owner of the huge British United Shoe Machinery Company, who very generously gave Bradgate Park to Leicestershire. Once past Bilston Coplow, the road leads down to the A47, where you turn right to return to Leicester. This marks the end of the tour.